This is embarrassing. Oh gosh. Hello my lovelies, Coley here, and welcome to Book Buyers Anonymous. As in, a book haul where I <laughs> have some serious life questions for myself on my buying problem. You know, a global pandemic hit. Coronavirus just came into our lives. And like a lot of people, I picked up some new hobbies, some old hobbies, I was reading more. But the biggest hobby that I put, picked up during COVID was actually just ordering books online while drinking wine. <laughs> it's a problem. So behind me, I have somewhere between 70 and 80 books to show you. The problem is with this is this isn't actually all of them. I, I know I've got like, at least 20 plus more coming in the mail from Book Depository. I just looked at the pile and I was like, you know what? This is just too much. I need to do this now. And I'm gonna do it now. And then when more books come in, we'll just talk about it. But as long as you and I are on the same page and know that I've got a book buying problem, you know, I know, you know, we're both aware. We're just gonna ignore the fact that this is a problem. And we're just gonna talk about some fun books. Let's do it. Also, by the way, guys, this is in complete random order because the idea of trying to put all of these in order gave me a headache. So I'm just gonna pull them off randomly and we're just gonna talk about them as they come out. First up is Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoyevsky. <laughs> I'm not gonna try and pronounce that. This is a classic by a Russian author. I have no idea what this is actually about, but. I saw one of my favorite bookstagrammers post a picture of this cover and I was like, I need to own that. It was so cheap. I got it for like $4 on Amazon. I uh, bought it because one of my goals for 2021, besides a book buying ban, which let's hope that that actually happens, is to read more classics. So this is one of the ones that I picked up with that intention in mind. Next up, I picked up this from a new independent bookstore in Vancouver that just opened on Granville Island. It's called Upstart and Crow. If you are from the Vancouver area and need a new independent bookstore to go support, they're brand new and they opened in the middle of a pandemic. And I feel like so bad for any new business who had to open up during this time. So my sister went and I went down to go and check them out and I picked up this one and I've never heard of it before. And it's called The End We Start From and it's by Megan Hunter and it is about a new mother who is basically going through a climate change catastrophe. So London floods and she basically becomes homeless and it goes with her newborn son in search for safety. That's kind of how it was explained to me. The guy in the bookstore told me it was great. So I bought it also. The cover is just so pretty. I'm a sucker for anything with waves on it. Next, I also bought this from Upstart and Crow, and this is Ariel by Sylvia Plath, and it is a collection of poems from her. Another thing that I really have been wanting to get into more of, which I think I talked about in the Reading Rush uh, TBR list, was the fact that I wanna read more poetry. So I picked this up because one, I think the cover is, again, beautiful. There's a running theme here, but also Sylvia Plath is just like a classic author as well. So I was like, two birds, one stone, poetry and classics. I'ma buy it. All right, next, I picked up Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility. I bought all of Jane Austen's books in these covers. I'll talk about the other ones in a little bit. And this one is Sense and Sensibility. Once again, not sure what this is about, but bought it because I want to read more classics this year. And I've been reading some modern retellings of Jane Austen by Sonali Dev this year, which I've really enjoyed. I read Pride, Prejudice, and Other Flavors, which was great. And then I read Recipes for Persuasion during the Reading um, Rush vlog. And so I'd love to reread. I have read Pride and Prejudice, but I would love to reread it and then also read some of um, Jane Austen's other works so I can better compare it to the retellings that I have read. So bought that. I then bought Homegoing by Yag Yazi. And this is a super famous book. It's basically tells the story of two sisters and how their two kind of lives go through in a multi-generational thing. And this is on the top of a bunch of anti-racist reading lists. And I just thought it sounded really interesting. I've been meaning to read it for years. And I saw this cover, which I haven't been able to find anywhere at Upstart and Crow. And I was like, okay, I'll buy it. So I picked up that. Then 
I bought A Question of Holmes. This is the fourth book in the Charlotte Holmes series. I haven't read any of them. I bought all four. Some of them are also in this stack, but this is the final one. Charlotte Holmes is Sherlock Holmes' great, great, great granddaughter. And then the other character, Jamie Watson, is Watson's great, great, great grandson. And the two of them go on adventures. It's like a YA fun series. I just thought it would be a good series to read when I'm looking for something a little bit more like mind numbing, like that I don't need to focus on too much. I usually go to YA when I'm looking for that. Next up is Luster. This I got, I almost bought this as an add-on for book of the month because they had it as one of the add-on possibilities, but then I didn't get it and then had instant regrets because I saw a million rave reviews for it all over my Instagram from a lot of my friends even who I really trust and said that it was absolutely great. And so a quick take on this is basically about a 20 something year old woman who is living in New York and it touches on topics like sex, racism, art, and power, I think is what they described it at. And it sounds, really good. I don't know too too much about it, but I've just heard some really great things. So I'm really excited to read this. I always find book hauls hard because it's like, you want to describe what the books are about, but you haven't read them yet. So you don't actually know what they're about, but I'm trying my best. The next thing I got, this is what I bought up at a independent bookstore on Bowen Island. It's one of my favorites. Um, if you're ever going through Bowen or are in Bowen, go to the toy store and they have a little book section and um, the buyer there is great. And this is called, the Sentence is Death, and this is by Anthony Horowitz, and it is a crime novel, and I don't know necessarily what it's about, once again, but let me read this. It's basically about this celebrity divorce lawyer who is found bludgeoned to death in his bachelor pad with a bottle of wine, and he didn't actually ever drink, so... That's what the opening line was. And I was like, that sounds good. I also just thought these covers were really pretty. And I have a friend who really likes all of his horror, no um, or not horror, sorry, crime books. And crime is a, a, a genre that I don't read necessarily all the time, but when I'm in the mood, I'm really, I really enjoy it. So I loved the covers, sounded good. I got like three of his books. So that's that. I bought The Memory Police. This is the story of a island off the coast of Japan where objects are disappearing. So first it's like hats and then ribbons and then like perfume. And then it starts going into like things that are more serious. And most of the people on the island are completely oblivious to the changes. So they just don't remember, right? Everyone just kind of forgets. But there are a few people who still remember and they are basically like living in fear of the draconian memory police and the memory police are the ones committed to ensuring that what has disappeared is already forgotten. And I've heard mixed things about this. I've heard some people say it's like one of their favorites, but then like Noelle Gallagher didn't really like it so much. And so some of the booktubers I follow like loved and raved about this and some we're like kind of more like meh about it. So I'm really excited to give it a read. It sounds really fascinating. It gives me really like 1984 vibes and I'm here for it. God, I'm gonna be here all day. Next up, I have Northanger Abbey. Again, Jane Austen explained it before, bought all of her books. This is about a young girl with a very active imagination. Her entry into the fashionable social scene in Bath results in invitation to stay with the new friends of Northanger Abbey, but Catherine's naivety and love of sensational novels leads to an embarrassing and entertaining consequences. Wanna read more classics? Thought Jane Austen was a good place to start. <sighs> Guys, I'm really upset about this one. <laughs> I've never read anything by Stephen King. My godfather is a huge Stephen King fan. I asked him, what's your favorite Stephen King novel? He said, Insomnia. So I went and I ordered Insomnia. I ordered a very specific cover on Book Depository that looked like this. This is what came. They have matching ISBN codes, which is really disappointing because I think that cover is so much prettier. I think this cover is actually pretty ugly. I'm still going to keep it. I'll read this one. And if I like it, I'll gift it to my sister and then I'll try and find the cover that I actually want. Um, and if I don't like it, then I won't bother. But I'm really bummed that it came in this cover because I think this cover is so ugly, but I'm still excited to read it. And it's basically about this man who is mourning the death of his wife and he starts to suffer from chronic insomnia. He basically starts to get sleep depression hallucinations. I'm not sure. I know there's something about like being able to see strings of people's souls and like people coming and snipping them off. It's 
supposed to be really good in like an idea on consciousness. That's how my godfather explained it to me. So about that one. Next, I got Black Girl Unlimited. This is part memoir, part magic. In it is a coming of age story about this girl named Echo Brown and she's a wizard from the east side of Cleveland. It's kind of like the projects of um, East Cleveland. She basically like travels between these two portals between like this rich white private school and then back to the projects and it kind of talks about like this idea of having to live between the two lives and I'm pretty sure this is YA. I've heard some really great things about this and I just think the cover is absolutely stunning so it is a yeah kind of like little bit magical coming of age story about a girl growing up in the projects i then bought huckleberry finn i have never read this again wanting to read more classics actually i think i may have read this in high school here's the thing i don't remember what i read in high school and what i didn't like a lot of the stuff that i i read i like know vaguely the storylines but i just don't <sighs> I just don't really know. And this basically tells the story of a 13 year old boy from the wrong sides of the tracks where he fakes his own death and he floats away on a raft down the Mississippi River where he meets Jim who is a runaway slave. It's kind of about this kind of story of the two of them kind of adventuring together and uh, they encounter a cross section of characters from slave hunters to thieves to aristocrats and people and the two of them kind of run away together that's what i understand and i'm curious because i'm pretty sure mark twain no i know mark twain is white <laughs> i'm not pretty sure i've heard some debate around his portrayal of black people specifically in the old books and i think it's really interesting because in high schools we're kind of taught about slavery through books like this and I, another great for um what i'm thinking of is what am I thinking of? Oh, To Kill a Mockingbird, a classic as well, but they don't necessarily have the best portrayals of black people necessarily as well, even though they're used as educational tools. So I kind of want to look at this from more of like a scholarly point of view and kind of like analyze it a bit from that realm. Next up, I got Tin Man by Sarah Winman, and this is about two boys named Ellis and Michael who are inseparable, and the boys become men, and then Annie walks into their lives, and it changes nothing and everything. My friend Charlotte, who I love so much, one of my besties, she read this earlier this year, and she said she really liked it, so I'm excited to give it a go. She said it was like lighthearted and a good read and it's really quick. I think it's only 195 pages and the text is really big so this is gonna be one what I read when I'm like not wanting to think too hard. I didn't actually buy this. I found this in a little free library and this is called The American Boy and I bought it because the cover. <laughs> yeah, ongoing theme here. And I got it because I just thought the cover was really cool. And this tells the story of Edgar Allan Poe. And it is by Andrew Taylor. Did I already say that? I think so. It's set in 1819 and Thomas Shield, a new master at a school just outside of London, is a tutor to a young American boy and the boy's sensitive best friend, Charles Grant. When a brutal crime is committed, he finds himself at the heart of a labyrinth mystery, a tangle of sex, money, murders, and lies from what he seems he cannot escape. And what of the strange American boy at the heart of these macabre events. What is the secret of the boy named Edgar Allan Poe? So I grabbed that from a little free library, thought the cover was beautiful, gonna read it. Then I picked up Kim Jeong, born 1982, and it's a story of a South Korean woman that is living through the end of the 20th century and is raising questions about endemic misogyny and institutional oppression that is relevant to all. So it sounded like a fascinating feminist read and I'm here for it. Next up, one of the most anticipated releases of 2020 by and large is Transcendent Kingdom by Yak Yazi as well. Just picked this up the other day, brand new. I love to support authors on when their books first come out and I just heard everyone talking about it and I felt left out that I didn't know about it. So I bought it. This tells the story of a girl named Gifty who is a PhD candidate studying neuroscience. And her, if I'm not mistaken, basically her brother dies from a overdose due to depression uh, after an ankle injury left him hooked on oxycodone and then he ends up dying of a heroin overdose and then her mother is suicidal and lives in her bed. She's at Stanford University studying reward seeking behavior in mice and the neural circuits of depression and addiction and she's basically trying to come to terms with 
her own grief and uh, discover the scientific basis for the suffering she sees all around her. It sounded fascinating. I'm really excited to read both Homegoing and this one by her. So next up, okay, so just this past weekend, I was up in the Okanagan with my family. We went to the wine region and we had kind of like a little family holiday together as a celebration for my sister's 30th birthday. It was her 30th birthday present for all of us to go. And in Penticton, there is a used bookstore and I went and picked up a couple of these because they just looked so cool. I saw this one in the window of the store and I was like, I need that. And then when I was in there, I found another one. And I was like, I need that one too. So this is Gothic fantasy. Mary Shelley horror stories. So it has Frankenstein in it, but it also has a few other lesser known stories by her. And she's kind of like the creator of what some people say is the first science fiction novel. And so she writes about horror and it's very like gothic and it's just good. So it's got like a collection of all of her stories. So I picked that up. I then saw this and I was like, this just sounds so cool. And this is Epic Tales, Japanese Myths and Tales. This talks about from the creation of the myth of Izanagi and Izanami, which kind of ex explains the origins of the island of Japan to some ghost stories or the different gods and spirits and like the Onis of Japanese mythical history. So it just sounded really interesting and I'm excited to read this in bits and pieces and learn more about Japan through that. Next up, I picked up Max Porter's Lanny. This is about a young boy, if I'm not mistaken. And I heard some memes just talk about this a lot and I feel like she said that it was really good. And I feel like that's why I bought it. I have no idea what it's about, but I'm pretty sure it's told from the perspective of a little boy. That I do remember. I might be wrong about this. I have no idea, but it looked good. I remember hearing really good things about it. I've already read this. If you follow me on Instagram, then you know. But this is Matt Haig's new book. I am a Matt Haig stan. He's my favorite author of all time. This just came out in the UK only. It comes out here in North America in I think a month from now. But I pre-ordered this from Waterstones because Waterstones does pre-orders of, where is it? Signed editions. So I pre-ordered a signed edition. And as you can see, I've got lots of tabs in this and this is my favorite book I've read all year. Take that for what it is. But this is basically the story of a young girl who attempts to commit suicide and before she passes on to actual death. She kind of wakes up from kind of falling asleep from her drug overdose to this place called the Midnight Library. And she walks in and she finds her old librarian who basically tells her between life and death, there is a library. And within that library, the shelves go on forever. Every book provides a chance to try another life you could have lived to see how things would be if you had made other choices. Would you have done anything different if you could have the chance to undo your regrets? So basically she kind of sits there with the girl and she gets to try on all these different lives based off of all of the things that she was regretting that kind of caused her to spiral into her mental health spiral or that she did to end up killing herself. This overwhelmed me. It was beautiful. It made me cry. It's very spiritual and it is a fascinating take on near death experiences and also reminding you that just because you regret something and you think that that could have led to a better outcome that you don't actually know that maybe the things that you are holding on to would have made your life worse than it is right now. So that is the Midnight Library. 10 out of 10 recommend. Everyone should read it. Next, I picked up Patsy by Nicole dennis Ben. I have read Here Comes the Sun by her and I loved it. And so this is the story of Patsy. She moves from Jamaica to America with the hopes of reuniting with her old lover. And she kind of leaves behind her old religious mother and her young daughter to be able to pursue a new life in America. So I'm very excited about this. Next, I picked up Brother by David Chariandi. This is by a Canadian author, which always makes me excited. I love reading books by Canadian authors. And it's set in the outskirts of Toronto. And it's about uh, these two young brothers that are Trinidadian immigrants. And it kind of follows them through their lives. If I'm not mistaken, that's kind of the gist I got. Two more books from the Study in Charlotte series. I think this is book 
one and I think this is book three and book two is somewhere in there too. So I already explained those. Whew. First act done guys. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Next I picked up Tell the Wolves I'm Home. I bought this because the cover is mint green. Are we surprised? Not really. This is basically about a young 14 year old girl. Um, her best friend is basically her uncle who is her godfather, her, her confidant, her best friend and then he dies and from some mysterious illness and the mom won't tell her why and she's really upset about it and her whole world is turned upside down. At the funeral she basically discovers her uncle's old friend and they the two begin to spend time together and she kind of finds this unexpected friendship between this stranger that she had never really heard of around her uncle's life. I picked up Thin Girls by Diana Clark and this is quoted by Roxane Gay. Roxane Gay, if I'm not mistaken, was like a mentor to Diana Clark and it, this is a story that explores body image, queerness, toxic diet culture, and the power of sisterhood, love, and friendship. Yeah, it tells the story of these two twin sisters, one of them who ends up battling anorexia and it kind of tells the story between the two, if that makes sense. It sounded really good and I will read anything Roxanne Gay promotes because honestly Roxanne is fantastic and if you haven't read her book Bad Feminist, you should, but it just sounded really great. I don't know. Guys, I feel like I'm not doing a very good job at explaining any of these, but we're working through it. Next, I picked up The Adventure of Sherlock Holmes because again, wanting to read more classics, it was six bucks at Chapters and I realized that if I was going to read A Study in Charlotte with that, I would probably want to read some of actual Sherlock Holmes original stuff so I could get a little bit more context. So that's why I bought that. The next thing I picked up is Two Trees Make a Forest and this is by Jessica Lee. This is a memoir about a girl who discovers a bunch of letters written by her immigrant grandfather and it basically ends up leading the author to her ancestral homeland of Taiwan and there she seeks his story while growing closer to the land he knew. So she ends up hiking through the mountain sides of Taiwan. It's basically just talks about history, travel, nature, and it's a memoir and it just sounded fantastic and I love travel memoirs and I love family and I love everything to do with everything that the description said and the cover is also beautiful so I bought that. Next I bought The Lion's Den because I also heard a lot of people on Instagram talking about this. I have read the first couple of chapters of it and then I put it down just because I forgot it at home and then I was like still at my cabin for a few days and I wanted to read something else and then I just haven't gone back to it if that makes sense. But this is basically the story of Belle who is a girl who is like trying to become an actress basically and her best friend Summer invites her on a glamorous getaway to the Mediterranean with her billionaire boyfriend and basically the vacation sounds like it's gonna be like this huge amazing thing and then it ends up kind of not being so great and it ends up turning into a nightmare because the billionaire boyfriend is is kind of a uh, tyrant and Belle kind of comes to realize that Summer is a vicious gold digger and not really a nice person and so it's all about that and it just sounded like a fun summer drama so I'm excited to actually read it. I need to pick it back up. Next I picked up The Jungle Book. This is another classic and I just saw this cover at actually HomeSense which I thought was super random but I picked it up because I have never actually read the original Jungle Book that the classic Disney movie is based off of and I thought the cover was cool and it was really cheap at HomeSense and yeah. Next I picked up Watershed. This was one of the books that I bought with my sister when we went to Iron Dog Books which is another independent bookstore here in the city of Vancouver and it is indigenous owned. It's got like used and new books and so my sister and I went down and went to go support them during COVID. I think I filmed a, a little bit of it when I did my Reading Rush vlog and this is Watershed and it is a based in Canada by Doreen van der Stoop and it is about based in 2058 the glaciers are gone and a catastrophic drought has hit the prairies of Canada. A villa is desperately trying to keep her family goat farm afloat hoping against hope that the new water pipeline arrives before the bill collectors do. It basically is this like post-apocalyptic futuristic fiction about human relationships and the hard realities of climate change. So it sounded really good. I thought the colors of the cover were really pretty. 
and I'm all for books based in Canada because I feel like there's not enough. I went on a mission earlier this year to read all of Matt Haig's books because I had read a large portion of them but I hadn't actually read all of them so I wanted to get matching covers of them all so I went and bought all of his books in matching covers. The only annoying thing is that these don't match the Midnight Library. So when the Midnight Library comes out in one of these covers, I'll get it as well. But I picked up How to Stop Time, love this, top three by him. The Humans by Matt Haig, my favorite book of all time. I absolutely love this book so much. I think everyone should read it. I will say though, Midnight Library, kind of tied with this now. I think those two are hand in hand his best books. Last Family in England, another one of my absolute favorites. I mean, I love all of these books. I, I don't know why I'm even saying that, but it used to be called The Labrador Pact. It's got different names in different countries, but this is The Last Family in England. Read this earlier this year, gave it five stars, loved it. Next is The Possession of Mr. Cave. It's the only one I haven't read yet. Hoping to read this by the end of the year. It's the only one left that I haven't read. The Dead Father's Club. This is a modern retelling of Hamlet told from the perspective of an 11 year old boy with a panic disorder. And it's really sad. It's like really, really sad, but it's really well done. It might not be for everyone because it's very realistically told from the perspective of an 11 year old boy. And so you're kind of having to deal with those thought patterns of someone who's not fully emotionally developed but I personally really loved it and I think he nailed it. So that one's really good. Then the Radleys, which I have read. I read this last year, another five star by him. Family drama about um, a family of vampires who didn't tell their kids that they were vampires because they didn't want them to start attacking people. And the two parents had decided to basically go vegetarian. And then the daughter has this accident where she attacks um, someone and ends up killing them because she's just so bloodthirsty. And then it kind of is this discovery and unraveling of the parents having to explain to them that they are actually vampires right when this creepy uncle kind of sweeps in, so it's a good one. I really enjoyed it. Then I picked up All My Punny Sorrows by Miriam Toes. My sister loves this author and she, my sister recommended this one to me and it is the story of two sisters, one who is like a world-renowned pianist, she's glamorous, wealthy, happily married, but she's depressed. And then there's Yuli who's divorced, broke, sleeping with the wrong men, absolutely miserable like kind of life, but she desperately wants to keep her sister alive. Elf attempts to commit suicide and is hospitalized right before her highly anticipated uh, world tour. And Yoli's basically forced with this impossible question of whether it's better to let a loved one go. The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Bandel. I've heard really weird things about this one. This was Literary League's book club pick a couple of months ago and I bought it because I was going to read it during that and then I didn't end up reading it during that. So I still want to read it but I've heard some really mixed reviews and no one's really sure what it's about even after reading it. So I'm not really sure what it's about but it is based in Vancouver Island. So that I'm excited for. Two other books by Anthony Horowitz. This is his first one, The Magpie Murders. My Nana read this when I bought it and she said she, it was really good. We were staying up at my cabin together and she really liked it. It's basically like, it's this editor who works with this best-selling crime writer and then within the, his new manuscript, it, between the lines, there's this like story of this real life murder apparently. That's kind of the vibe that I got from reading the back and it sounded really good, so. Another one like that, and then the word is murder. I have no idea what this is about. So here's the first line. One bright spring morning in London, Diana Coper, the wealthy mother of a famous actor, enters a funeral parlor. She is there to plan her own service. Six hours later, she is found dead in her own home, strangled with a curtain cord. I mean, I'm kind of here for it. Next up, I bought We Are The Weather by Jonathan Safran Foer. And this is all about climate change, if I'm not mistaken. Lena Norms raved about this, so I'm excited to give that a go when I'm not feeling too depressed about the world. Oh gosh, my butt is falling asleep. Oh, okay. Next up is What is the What? It's based on the life of Valentino Achak Deng, who, along with thousands of other children, the so-called Lost Boys, were forced to leave his village in Sudan at the age of seven and track hundreds of miles by foot pursued by militias, government bombers, and wild amateurs, crossing the deserts of three countries to find freedom. When he finally resettles in the United States, he finds a life full of promise, but also heartache and a myriad of new challenges. I've heard this book is really sad, so I'm saving myself for like when I'm emotionally prepared for it, but I'm 
I'm ready to give it a go at some point. Next up is a Vanessa Yu's Magical Paris Tea Shop. I have actually read this already, but I wanted to quickly mention it. This is the story of a woman who can see people's fortunes from tea leaves. And it's not something that she can control. It's it's a very uncomfortable experience for her and she hates it. She hates that this is her thing. She also can't, for the life of her, get a boyfriend. She can't settle down. So her family enlists the help of a matchmaker from Shanghai. After her matchmaking appointment, she sees the prediction of death for the first time. And she basically was like, I can't handle this anymore. And her aunt, who is also a fortune teller, whisks her away and they go to Paris where she has to start training so that she can better control her visions. And while she's there, she learns more about herself and the roots of her gifts and realizes that maybe fortune telling isn't the only thing that her life is supposed to be about. That's all I'm gonna say. I really enjoyed this one. I loved Roselle Lim's other book that I read this year called Natalie Tan's Book of Luck and Fortune. Great books, highly recommend. I really love this. I gave it five stars. Next up, I picked up Wild Game, My Mother, Her Lover, and Me. Basically, when the main character was 14, her mother woke her up at midnight with five simple words that changed her life forever. Ben Souther just kissed me. Basically, the daughter becomes her mother's confidant and helpmate and basically helps her with the affair and it kind of tells the story of how that kind of relationship with her mother impacted her. I have heard great things about this and I am so excited. And oh, I think it's actually a memoir. Oh, it definitely is. It's a memoir about how her mother telling her about her affair and having to help her mother with her affair affected her. Next, I picked up We the Drowned by Karsten Jensen. And I bought this because it's based in Denmark. I'm Danish, if you didn't know that. It's a big part of my family and my heritage and I love anything to do with Denmark. And this cover is just so, 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 so stunning. It basically tells the story of the port town of Marstal, Denmark, whose inhabitants sailed the world from mid 19th century to the end of the Second World War. The novel tells of ships wrecked and blown up in wars, of places of terror and violence that continue to lure each generation. It's like a seafaring novel, basically. I, that's my vibe that I got from it, and I don't really know, but like, it's just so pretty. Next, I actually bought Frankenstein as well, which is what prompted me to buy that Mary Shelley gothic things that I collection where I could see some more of her stories and Frankenstein has been on my list for a long time as a classic that I really want to read so I'm excited to give that one a go. Another classic, I bought this because it's one of these like cloth bound gorgeous Knickerbocker classic editions and this is 12 Years a Slave by Solomon Northup. This is like a mashed potato book for me. If you <laughs> if you listen to Un Books Unbound, the podcast. They talk about mashed potato books. Like this is a book that's been on my TBR. I think it's like one of the oldest books on my Goodreads accounts that I've added to a to read shelf. It's one of the first ones I did. And it is about a skilled violinist who is living in New York when he ends up getting drugged and kidnapped and sold into slavery. And it tells the 12 years of his life in captivity. And it's basically like the story of his stolen freedom. Jane Austen, Emma, do I need to say any more? I just really loved these covers and I have read Emma before and it's one of my favorite Jane Austen books. I liked it more than Pride and Prejudice actually. It's my favorite one by her by far. I think Emma is just like a freaking hilarious character. So I picked up this edition because I thought the cover was really pretty. Next I picked up No Presents Please by Giant Hakini, Hakini. and this is a collection of short stories, I'm pretty sure. Someone describes it on the back of the book that it's like a glimpse into a crowd in which each face suddenly becomes clear. Brilliantly illuminates ordinary lives in the modern world. So it kind of tells like the story of Mumbai and different people. I don't really know too, too much to be honest, but that was the, it's, stories about different people in Mumbai. That's what I heard. And I've also seen a couple people I follow on Bookstagram rave about it, so I'm excited to give it a go. Next up, I picked up Wow, No Thank You by Samantha Irby. This is a collection of essays about basically her life. She has a couple of other books as well, and it's just like a collection of essays. I've heard that she's absolutely hysterical, so I'm excited to give that one a go. Oh my God, guys, I'm so fucking tired. Okay, next up, I picked up Fraternity Stories by Benjamin Nugent, Nugent? 
Fraternity celebrates the debauched kinship of boys and girls straddling adolescence and adulthood, the drunken antics, solemn confessions, and romantic encounters that mark their first years away from home. Beneath each episode lies the dread of exclusion. I don't know. It, I, I bought this mainly for the cover. I just thought the cover was really pretty. A couple of my favorite authors are quoted on the back, so I'm excited to give it a go, and it's really short. It's like under 150 pages, so. I think it'll be good. The Last of August. This is the other book. This is in the Charlotte Holmes series. I think this is book two. This might be book three, but I think we heard enough about those. I also got this at Home Sense when I bought the Jungle Book. This is Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. Again, wanting to read some more classics. This is a beloved children's book and I am really excited to actually read the classic that is so heavily referenced in media, so to give that a go. Then I picked up The Hollow Kingdom, and if I'm not mistaken, this tells the perspective from a bird. Oh yeah, a domesticated crow is a bird of simple pleasures. He spends his day hanging out with his owner, Big Jim, avoiding the slobbering affection of his dog. One day, his owner's eyeballs fall out of his head, and the crow decides that something's not right, and with the help of the dog, tries to cure him. Is that a weird description? Yes. Did I buy this because the cover is green? Yes. Did I think that it sounded intriguing? Yes. So I'm gonna give it a go. Sounds super weird, so I'm excited to read it. I picked up Kristen Hanna's The Great Alone. This was one of, one of my favorite books I read in 2019, and I was really upset that I didn't own a hard copy of it. Um, actually, the other one I bought was Normal People, and I just really wanted to have these in hard copy because I loved them so much, and I had read them on my Kindle, and I was upset that I didn't have it in paperback, so I bought it. It's the story of a family, and the father is dealing with PTSD after the Vietnam War, and they basically pick up their entire life and move to rural Alaska. And it talks about um, the family kind of having to deal with the harsh and unforgivable wilderness and learning how to adapt with a father who is quite abusive due to his PTSD. So it's really fascinating. And there's like romance, there's love. I love everything Kristen Hanna has written. I've only read three of her books, but every single one has been so, so good. So I highly recommend this one. It was one of my favorite books I read last year. Then I picked up Greta Thunberg. No one is too small to make a difference. And if I'm not mistaken, this is just a collection of some of her speeches from over the years, along with some pictures. And I just think Greta Thunberg is amazing. And I really want to read more about climate change. And I just find her to be so inspirational. And so I picked up this edition of No One is Too Small to Make a Difference because I thought it was a great cover as well. Next up, I picked up There There by Tommy Orange. This is our book club pick. Tommy Orange is this um, follows 12 characters from different native communities all um, traveling to the big Oakland powwow all connected to one another in ways they may not realize and so it kind of tells the story of these different Native Americans who are grappling with the complex and painful history of the abuse that Native Americans have gone through and in conjunction with that we're also reading a mind spread out on the ground so in our book club that I'm in or I host <laughs> called uh, the anti-racist book uh, anti-racism book club is basically we will read a nonfiction book and then a fiction book that kind of goes in conjunction with it. So in our first book month, we read So You Want to Talk About Race, and in conjunction with that, the next month we read Americana. And then last month, we read Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall, which, oh my god, guys, chef's kiss. It was so good. And so in conjunction with that, we are reading this month Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. And so this is our book club pick for this month. I just bought this as well. This is a story of 12 different women who are black living in Britain and it kind of tells the story of how they're all kind of intertwined. It's like a journey of discovery and it talks about um, race, gender, sexuality, kind of like all mixed together into one and it's written in prose. I'm really excited to go read this. This is our book club pick to go along with Hood Feminism and then we got these two to be our next two to go in conjunction with each other. So we're reading this one in October which is A Mind Spread Out on the Ground and it is a memoir uh, by Alicia Elliott. It talks about all about the different treatments uh, Native people in North America go through. It she talks about race, parenthood, mental illness, poverty, sexual assault, gentrification, missing women, and a lot of the issues that happen with Native American women 
in Canada and the United States. So I'm really excited to read this. This is our nonfiction memoir pick. And then after that, we're going to read There There by Tommy Orange, which it kind of just tells the stories of what it's like to be Native American living in urban America. So really excited to read that. Next up, I got A Song Below Water. I bought this because one, the cover, Two, it's about mermaids. And that was all I wanted to know. And it says, A Song Below Water is the story for today's readers, a captivating modern fantasy about black mermaids, friendship and self-discovery set against the challenges of today's racism and sexism. And it is YA and it just sounded great. I am here for anything to do with mermaids. I love mermaids so much, they're my fave. So I just thought that was really interesting and looked really good. So. I promise we're getting through this guys we're getting through this next up i didn't actually buy this this is something that's really sentimental to me and this is um agatha christie's murder on the orient express but the reason that this is so sentimental to me is that i got this from my grandmother who passed away uh during covid she didn't get covid but she was in a home and we weren't allowed to see her and i think that the lack of human interaction took a really huge toll on her mental health and she passed away earlier this year so pretty bummed about that but it has her name in it on the inside and it says July 13th 1987 and my grandma had such good taste in books so I'm really excited to read this and I'm just really glad that I, I have it so there's that one then I picked up Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi and basically what this is about is this coffee shop in Tokyo where they serve you coffee that allows you to time travel as long as you're back before the coffee gets cold and so a bunch of people come in I think there's four different people who come in and but the journey into the past does not come without risks customer must sit in a particular seat they cannot leave the cafe and finally they must return to the present before the coffee gets cold sounds like such a fascinating concept and I just loved the idea of the time travel but also just like I just think it's such an interesting concept and I heard Ariel Bissett I think rave about this one so I'm excited to give it a go. Next up I got A Man Called Ove and this is about a grumpy old man thinks he's surrounded by idiots and then this family moves in next to him and he's super irritated that they're there and he hates everything about them but then they kind of develop this loving relationship and kind of end up discovering that he's not such a grumpy old man anymore or as you thought so. I've heard some great things about this. I'm kind of bummed because I ordered a different cover and this is the one that showed up, but I don't really mind. It's not the end of the world. I then picked up Animal Farm by George Orwell. Again, want to read some more classics. And this one's so short, right? It's like under 100 pages. And I want to give this one a go. I have read 1984. I think I brought it up earlier, and, but I've never read Animal Farm. So I am hoping to read this on my journey to reading more classics. Guys, if the framing has changed, it's because I didn't realize that my memory card ran out of space and so I finished the video and then went and looked and realized that the last few books were left out, which is pretty upsetting, not gonna lie, but whatever, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna revisit. So I picked up The Air Affair. This is basically a modern kind of like spin-off kind of take on Princess Kate Middleton and Prince William. I've heard that it's really good and I just I am here for some like light-hearted romances especially if they are based on royals. I really loved Red White and Royal Blue which kind of is about it's like the idea of like Prince Harry but it's like not really Prince Harry and so I picked these up. I've had friends absolutely rave about them and so I'm excited to give them a go when I'm looking for something light-hearted. Persuasion, Pride and Prejudice. Do I need to go into these descriptions? Probably not. Another couple of classics. Like I said earlier, I've read some modern spinoffs by Sonali Dev that I've really enjoyed about these two books. And so it made me want to reread the um, originals and I just really love these covers. So I picked them up. Then we've got Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. I didn't know that this was a book, guys. I didn't really know. And I love Peter Pan. It's one of my favorites, period. And so I was so excited to realize that it was a book and I saw this really gorgeous cover and I was like, I need to read that. So I picked it up. It's a classic, quite short, and it's a children's novel originally. So um, I'm currently reading it. I'm on page 13, so not too far in, but I'm excited to give this a go and see how it compares to the stories that we so typically know in media. I then picked up Do You Take This Man, Ellie Moon? And I got this on Bowen and the author was friends with the bookstore owner and she'd happened to be there that morning and had just brought in a bunch of new books 
and it's basically about this bride, Ellie Moon, who's like in a bit of a bridal slump, and then 10 days before her wedding, she happens to accidentally stumble into an adventure involving her celebrity crush and a mysterious murder. So she she was pretty blasé about her whole wedding, and she was kind of ho-hum about her uh, life, and then 10 days before her wedding, she goes on to this huge adventure. I then picked up Island of Sea Women, and this tells the story of two girls who come from very different backgrounds and kind of come together as they start working in the sea with their village's all-female diving collective. And it's set on this Korean island of Jeju. And I think that this is an actual real place. And this is like, it's based on kind of a real thing. And I just thought the idea of a female diving collective, so amazing. Um, if you guys don't know, I am a scuba diver. I have my dive masters. I love diving so much. So anything to do with that, I was like, oh my God, sign me up. Women diving. It sounds cool. So bought that. I then got Love and Gelato and Love and Luck. And these are basically some YA romances. I've heard they're super cheesy and just super lighthearted and like make you feel good. They all have like little European backgrounds. They follow these main characters who end up traveling to these different... Ooh, that's a loud motorcycle very loud and they end up traveling to these different countries because there's like some family drama and they end up like going to this country to like deal with it and so one is based in Italy one is based in Ireland and there's a third one coming out later this year that's based in Greece and it's just supposed to be so fun and so like fairy tale landscape love stories etc etc so I'm really excited love and gelato love and luck this is gonna be one of those things that I read when I like don't want to think too hard. Oh my gosh, guys, last two books. Okay, the next one I got is The Marrow Thieves by Cherry Dimaline, and I heard, who was it? I think it was Raylene on Books Unbound's podcast, which is like, I'm obsessed with the podcast. I listen to it all the time. And she talked about this book and it's basically about a post-apocalyptic world. Indigenous people of North America are being hunted and harvested for their bone marrow, which carries the key of recovering something the rest of the population has lost, which is the ability to dream. So basically, the bone marrow holds the only way for the rest of humanity to dream again and so indigenous people are being hunted and Frenchie and his companions struggle to survive as they make their way up north to the old lands to try and survive. And so it sounded so fascinating. I just thought it was such a cool concept so I picked that one up. And last but not least, I cannot believe we made it through. I picked up The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This is by the same author who wrote 99% Mine, which I read last year and I liked it a lot. Like I think I ended up giving it 3.5, like four stars. And then I watched Noelle's rap August wrap up and she talked about how she read this and this is like one of her favorite romances she's ever read. She gave it five stars. She wants to get a tattoo based off this book. She said it was so good. And then she read 99% Mine afterwards and said that 99% Mine is trash in comparison to this, which makes me excited because I didn't hate 99% Mine, but if this one is that much better, I'm totally here for it. And this is basically like about these two people. It's like a haters to lovers story and and it's after these two publishing companies kind of like merge and these two people who work for the two like publishing companies, one of them is like the mom and pop, like they're all about love and the art of books and the other one is like a big corporation all about making money. These two end up having to share an office during the merger and like are just so mean to each other and hate each other. I'm sure as we know from haters to lovers, they probably become lovers. So I'm excited to read this one. It sounded really good and I've heard some rave, rave, rave reviews about it. So it should be good. Oh my God, guys, there we have it. I finished it. I got through all 80 books. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if any of these sound good to you and which one you think I should read first. I need to now reorganize my very empty bookshelves and put everything back onto the shelves. I'm just feeling good that I finally actually recorded this so I can put everything away. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up because it really supports my channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope you guys are enjoying this bookish content. You guys have been messaging me a bunch saying how much you're loving it. So I'm happy to do some more. Um, let me know in the comments down below if there's anything else you want to see. And like I said, tell me which one you think I should read next. But that's all I got for you guys in today. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.